what's up, MLB Nation, MMC Nation, Shawarma Nation, your boy's back. It's Jeff Guy, getting into some MLB action. Franchise, it's the Toronto Blue Jays, it's the rebuild turn Sims League thing we've been doing. And guys, we are well into this bad boy now. We are in 2031, um, and it's, you know what? It's been just as fun as season number one, man. I've really been enjoying this one, so I appreciate you guys throwing us this idea. Um, it's been a good one that I've been, you know, be able to do myself, and Chef Tom and I love talking about it and seeing the moves that we make um, and kind of discussing, and we kind of peg off each other, like, what would you have done here? What do you think about this trade? And, you know, it's been kind of fun dynamic for us, so um, we're back into it again. Uh, here we are, um, as always, before heading into the season. Let me show you guys what our roster looks like. So, Josh Ramirez now our number one pitcher, followed by Willie Del Rosa, Delman Cook, Walker Sterling, Ozzy Perez, and then Brian Avalos, Nino Castaneda, Leonardo Aguiar, Antonio Panagua, uh, Marcus Miller. So, we got some definite, definite solid prospects still here. We definitely went younger. Uh, uh, we made a couple trades, changed things up a bit. So, um, you'll definitely see the, the starting pitching has now gone young. On the reliever side, you got Dwyer, Ragsdale, uh, Moreland, Saldana, Barlow, Coley. Um, I'm not loving this right now, to be honest, but you know what? I'm pretty satisfied with it. I think we'll start the season and see how we go and then kind of figure it off from there what we're going to do. Uh, Gregorio Perez, uh, a.k.a. Toke Nasty, looking like he is going to be our closer again this year, or at least the bullpen. Uh, Steven Alderson looking like he might be not too bad as an option. And then our newer guy, Esteban Lerma. Uh, 23 and 80 as well. So some great like uh, depth there at relief and closing pitcher. Um, as our catchers, Omar Hernandez is officially taking over James Berry, uh, but both in the 80s, both looking good. I'm pretty also excited to see John Jensen and Francisco Valido here. Uh, Will Littner, of course, as well, still there. So awesome young guys, awesome great looks, um, all potential to potentially take the starting job. I mean, catcher has just been kind of a tire fire. We've always just kind of picked what's available. We haven't had a good long-term starting catcher in quite some time. Uh, first base, Moya and Telez. They're going to battle it out. James Berry also plays first. So um, something I might look to upgrade during the season, but for now, I'm going to let them run with it. Maybe Moya might figure out his potential again. Uh, Miguel Sierra, obviously, is the guy at second. Joe Bowie, a nice little second. And Kevin Sanchez as well. Play some great... Uh, looking like Joey Bats there, actually. He plays some great baseball for us, so curious to see what he brings. Uh, Vlad Jr., as if there's any question, who's still at third base. Uh, Garlobo has just been a really good non-playing guy for us, and Otis Gaspar as well. Uh, but Gaspar's number is finally starting to show now, down to 66. Uh, Albert Ray, our shortstop now, followed by Rob Ferrioli, uh, really working his way up. Another look, nasty-looking beard, and uh, Dave Poole, of course. Uh, Carlos Tavares had a phenomenal year for us last year, so excited to see what he brings. Only 28. Uh, Johnny Ramura. He's really starting to show some worth here. Great fielder, great contact, 23, um, looking pretty good. Louis Cordero, big name that we brought in. Uh, Gary Nevis, kind of still kicking around here. 77, not too bad. Uh, Aaron Summers, of course, our big boy. We signed, free agent. This was years past now. Uh, he's only 29, 95. Tori O'Keefe, our boy. We drafted him, love every second of it. He's 86, 24, definitely is continuing to grow and probably going to show some worth even more this year. And Cole Terrell, who we kind of threw into a deal randomly, has really started to play well as well, if you will. Uh, and Henry Hashimoto is starting to work his way up now. Some great speed and stealing there, showing some great contact and fielding. So could be a guy. He also gets some depth time in there. And then Hernandez, obviously still young, going to work his way up. Also in the big boy power side, Juan Soto. He's down 85 now, so I don't know. Maybe if we start looking to move from Soto, Treo as well. He's 31, 83. So we got great depth in the outfield right now. Definitely not a worry for us. Tom Pitts um, and De Los Santos, some Bs there. So we are officially at the start of spring training. As you guys always know we do, we're going to sim through the spring training. Let them auto-fix the rosters. Let's see how the boys do. Not looking too good. We apparently just lost Ramon Armas and Emilio Velasquez. So we're just losing roster players all day. Um, we're 8-14. and 14, So we're having a losing record here. Not very normal for us here in Jays land. Losing in spring training. But you know what I mean? If we're going to lose, now's the time I'd rather be doing it. We just had a bunch of guys get put on uh, waivers, which I'm not too happy about. But we are starting off against the Red Sox, who officially have Michael Kopich, their former prospect. 
starting from the now. So that's pretty funny. Um, let's see what the roster is looking like here going in. So one, two, three, four, five, as expected. Um, Avalos is probably soon to be added to the 40 man as be an option very soon. Castaneda, Aguiar, these guys here. I mean, just depth. We're happy where they are at. One, two, three, four, five with Saldana. And I believe, so they only have Perez up. So we're actually short, short one reliever. I would typically carry one more. So I'm thinking maybe we call Coley up. And we'll see where we have that extra arm. Because we usually go six plus. And Ellis is getting sent down. Um, so we got Barry and Hernandez. Lintner's getting sent down. That makes sense. They're both at 82 now. Uh, Moya and Telez going to hold it down. Absolutely. Bowie and Sanchez both getting sent down here. Sierra, uh, Vlad Jr., Robbie Ray. So I'm not liking. We're a little short, I'd say, on our infielders. So we must be carrying. And oops, I accidentally changed teams there. Uh, I must be carrying a bunch of outfielders. So we got Tavares. We got one, two, three, and I believe he plays, sh yeah, he plays short. Okay, and then two, so I don't really know if we need to carry Treo. You know, as good as he is, unfortunately right now, I just don't see where he fits in. So does he have any options to go down? Cannot be sent down without clearing the waivers. Okay, so you know what? I mean, we do have to send someone down now already. And I mean, it, it has to be Treo. He's 31, he's the oldest of the bunch. Terrell's better currently, so... Sorry, Treo, bud. It is your time. You got to go back down to the minors. Um, send you back down to AAA. And that'll get us compliant for the season. So what does that mean for our lineup, you might ask? So we got Sierra at leadoff. This is versus right-handed pitchers. With Taveras, Vlad Jr., Summers, Telez, Soto, Moya, Ray, and Hernandez. Who's a switch hitter, which is great. And then versus left-handed pitchers, Sierra... Oh, where are we missing here? We are missing a, I'm assuming, right fielder? Yeah, there we go. So Cole Terrell, uh, actually they're both lefties, so we might as well just play Soto. Uh, oh wait, did he just come in at an 88? Okay, he did. Okay, so Sierra, Terrell, Junior, Summers, Tavares, Moya, Barry, Keefe, and Ray to finish it out. So that's what our rosters look like. Let's head into some simulation action because that is what really matters at this point. So we got guys clearing, which is great news. Um, everybody cleared. Fantastic. So they're off to Buffalo. Buffalo will hopefully be very strong now. Uh, Diamondbacks are already calling. Rob Cleveland, a 19C63 pitcher for Rob Huff, Bob Huffman. And he is a, wow, 24C. Hmm. This might be a deal that actually works out for us. He's 83 Huffman. You know what? I'm going to make that deal. I think, to be honest, that probably helps us already off the bat. So let's take a quick peek here at the relievers. So Huffman is already in 83, which means essentially right now, Barlow would be the guy to go down. But he pitched some a nice scoreless innings, so I can't really be too mad about that. So, okay, I guess it's going to be Barlow. He is 30. We're going to move him down to AAA. We're going to give this guy a shot. He is going to be the first call up, though. He did, has played well for us in the past. Uh, so we are 6-1. and one. Let's hope the dynamic here is not ruined with a new name. Uh, okay, we have 41 players on the roster. So let's go check that now, too. So let's go see the 40, man. Uh, who is on this that doesn't have to be, I think is the better question. So we got Cesar Aguiar, reliever. Um, he's 30 and he's 75. So you are about to lose your spot. You're going to go through waivers. That's fine. That's not a big loss for us. And now we're finally going to go back and continue our simulation here. Uh, boom. Okay, so Yankee series we lost. Tampa we lost. Come on, boys. We swept Minnesota. We swept the Mets. Let's take out Boston. Three or four. I'll take that. Cleveland we, we tied. Not too bad. We swept Seattle. Uh, we just swept Oakland. And a big deal here. Tristan McKenzie heading to the Brewers. From the Angels for Henry Tejada and Alex Fado. That's not bad. Uh, KC, we took that series. And we're at 27-9. and nine. I think that's one of our strongest starts we've ever had. So let's keep rolling through here. Get to that first-year player draft. We took out Tampa. We took out Texas. We uh, tied Philly. We took out the White Sox. We took out the Angels. We took out Seattle. Oh, we lost to Oakland. So I think that's our first series lost. We took three of four there from the Yankees. So we're 43-17, and 17 and we're only in June. Uh, we lost to Boston there. Let's go sim to the draft now. Hopefully we'll split that. So 2031 player draft. Where is your boy starting to draft here? What number will we at? Did we finish? Yep. Okay. There we go. Very bottom. Uh, so we got a 25 year old center fielder. I don't really see where that makes sense. 
Definitely not a fan of that. There's Enrique Sosa, who's got 80 potential, could be ready very soon um, from Venezuela. And we got Brian Hughes, who's apparently a 70 out of the draft. He's 18 and he 19, should be ready by 2032, essentially next year. So I'm going to go off the board. I'm going to take Brian Hughes. He looked pretty good. So I'm okay with that. Let's see what's coming up for us here in round number two. I was going to say, I believe we have a pick. Uh, so Tom Colon still kicking around here. Uh, Jackie Griffin, reliever, should be ready in a couple years. Uh, Jamison Childs, 75. Great contact, not too bad power. Some good fielding. I mean, I think I kind of know what player he's going to pan out to be. Don't really need any of those. Uh, reliever could do us some good. Andres Delgadio, uh, Lawrence Hayek. So they're both righties. One's a little older. It's a little bigger. You know what? I like the knuckle curve. So I'm going to give a chance here to Delgadio. Hopefully he turns out to be something for us. I mean, you saw a reliever. Obviously, we could probably use some extra arms, uh, some extra young guys there to hopefully help us pan out. Uh, what else we got? George Green. Looking pretty good. 75 from Kentucky. Good name. Uh, should be an 80 by 2032. So Jameson Childs is still there. So a lot of pitchers, again, in this draft right now. Um, so because we still got the 80s, I'm going to go with George Green. Looks good, man. Uh, they feel pretty confident about it, too. He's almost a full half, uh, half bar filled. So we'll do that. What else we got? Jamison Childs is still there. Okay, you know what? Let's do it. Let's go Jamison Childs. If he's good, he's good. We'll take our chance. If not, he's trade bait, as we always say. Um, still showing some 80s. This is a pretty deep draft. Not too bad. Not too shabby here at all. So we got uh, Kevin Cedeno. Uh, we should be ready potentially soon here. Uh, Charles Lynch. Jackie Griffin there. Still a bit of a project. Leonardo Juarez. He's a lefty. And he's 19. So I'm a big fan of that. Let's throw a lefty into the mix. I know we've drafted a lot of righties uh, more recently. And okay, we're going to get another pick here. And we're finally down to the 70s. These ones are kind of whatevers. Uh, let's sure. Let's go Benito Santos. And that ends that. So let's see how the draft panned out for us this year. I'm already seeing a C. Okay, we got a couple 80s there. So actually, our early picks are our worst ones. So Brian Hughes here, 19 year old. 73 potential. I'm going to walk away from that. He's got some good velocity, though. Uh, Delgadio not looking good. George Green, B potential on a 70 out of the draft. This guy might be extremely good in a very, very short period of time. You can't afford to offer this contract. Really? Okay. So i got to go make a quick trade here to free up a little bit of money because we got to sign these kids. So give me a second to make a quick deal. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So we found our deal. Uh, we did bring in that extra reliever. Todd Moreland is $5 million a year. I don't think it's really worthwhile for us. So we're bringing in a young, look at that, a potential 20-aged Padres reliever, Gary Yoshi. And we're moving on from Moreland, Aguila, De Los Santos. Guys are a little bit older, um, so that couldn't go that way. And now we should be able to go and go sign our draft picks that we want to keep. So that includes George Green, uh, Jamison Childs, who apparently great contact player and plays first, good fielder. Uh, so we took a chance. This one's going to pay off really well for us. And Leonardo Juarez, 72 already out of the draft. So another great, great pick for us here. So we'll get these guys a quick sign. That'll do it for those. And now um, I guess I haven't shown you guys how the team is doing. So let's jump into that quickly. In the meantime, we'll also change up these rosters. So look at Brian Avalos, who's absolutely killing it right now in the minors. Uh, he's making things interesting because Walker Sterling is getting a 28 um, to be up there in age. I mean, Del Rosa is 29. It's, I know it's young. I know it's young, but uh, for with regards to how old our players are here, so seven and four Ramirez, three five four uh, Delman Cook, four and five four eight six, not great. Del Rosa seven and three two three six, he's killing it. Avalos obviously nine and one, the guy's fantastic right now. Ozzy Perez having a great first year for us, six and one two two three. Nino Castaneda seven and zero oh, two seven two, and Walker Sterling four three four one two. So I'm not really sure why we are carrying six starters right now. I'm not going to ask. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, as relievers, we got Ragsdale, 5-0, Dwyer, 1.45 ERA. Huffman, the new guy, 3-0, .53. Gary Yoshi, our new guy, 0-1, 1-4-6. Uh, Thomas Colley, so he's uh, 82, 338, not too bad. Uh, Barlow, obviously, in the minors. Saldana, 4 6 three. So this is a bit of a problem. I'm thinking maybe I might give Barlow a shot again. Let's take a quick peek to see how these guys did. So last couple years, Saldana, not great. Barlow a little bit younger, a little bit more on the three side. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to send Saldana down to AAA. We're going to call back up Barlow, and we're going to give him his shot and see 
what he has to bring. I mean, look, he's 84 back up in the in the show again. So great sign there. Perez, 1.17 ERA. Can you ask for more? Um, Hernandez having a pretty good season for a guy who's non-offensive. He's batting 255. James Berry having a good year, 282. Uh, Rowdy Telez batting 323 with 14 home runs. He's 36 years old. Yeah. Uh, Richard Moya, 246. Again, I don't think he's panned out to be what we thought he was going to be. But nonetheless, he's not too, too bad. We will be shopping for a first baseman soon. Miguel Sierra, 262. I'm okay with that. Vlad Jr., 9 home runs and 287. Yeah, that's what he does. Um, Albert Ray, he's up to 87. 288 average. That's what I expected. Uh, Tavares, 279. He's playing very well. Summers, 282. Keefe, 295. Terrell, 289. It's like a really well-rounded look at a lot of guys. This is a little surprising. Soto down to 233. You can see he's down to 81. So maybe he's kind of lost that spark, lost that fire. But nonetheless, the team is playing well. I'm not going to make any major changes. Let's head off to the All-Star break and see how this rolls through. So, Saldana cleared. That's great. Bison's a little bit over. So we took out Atlanta. We took out the Phillies. Let's take out Baltimore. Boom, that's three right there. We lost the Houston series. We lost to Baltimore. We took out Miami. Come on. Swept Tampa. We took out Washington. Come on. You can't be losing that to Boston. Interdivision games you need to win. And now we're down to the Yankees. Just got swept by the Yankees, which is not normal for us. And then we lost the Kansas City series. So the guys are slowing down here a little bit, and I'm not a fan. Not liking that at all. So let's see now. We'll go to the end of July and try and figure out what we want to do. So that's straight losses to Atlanta. And here's some deals. So Kenny Katnick going over to the Diamondbacks. The Angels acquired Glenn Fabregas, David Rosario, Miguel Gonzalez. This is one of those youngsters for a solidified player deals. Finally back in the win column. We sweep Baltimore. We take uh, the 50-50 split with the White Sox. And the trade deadline is coming up fast. Let's see how the boys react here. We take two from the Yankees. So we're 69-39 and 39 at the deadline. Let's go see again what this roster looks like right now, who's performing, and we'll figure out what next steps are. So Delman Cook is back, 5-7, and 4.2. Not loving those numbers, I'm telling you. Uh, Josh Amir has 12-6, and 6, 3, 4, 2, 7, a great season. Avalos is looking great, 14-4 and 4 in the minors, up to 87. He's 22, he's going to be a stud. De La Rosa is on the DL right now, 9-5, and 5, 3, 0, 4. What's the injury looking like? One to two months of the broken arm, that's going to hurt us a bit. That will hurt us, but luckily we do have the extra starter up. Ozzy Perez, 9-4, 2-4-1. Nino Castaneda, 10-2, 3-5-3. And Walker Sterling, 5-4, 4-7-4. So not horrible. Um, obviously, De La Rosa losing him is going to be bad. And he is out, I think I said, one to two months, right? So that'll take us right into the playoffs. Um, looking at our relievers here. So Ragsdale, 10-2, 2-8-4. Barlow, 2-1, 2-9-2. So great calling him back up. We got Dwyer here, 2-1, 2-7-9. Yoshi, 1-3, 3-6-4. I mean, he's 20. Some growing pains. Huffman, 4-1, 0.62. That guy's been solid, man. And then we got Coley, 3-4-8. Not too bad. Saldana apparently picking it back up in the minors. That's a good sign. We're going to need that depth. And then Perez, 4-66. Not what I expected. Is he getting the saves? No. So I'm assuming Ragsdale is our saves guy. Apparently not. So who is getting us saves this year? It's not you. There we go. Okay, so apparently Gary Yoshi has been going for saves. He's got 31 of them. Is anybody else pitching in on these? 17 for Saldana. I'm assuming that was while he was up. So apparently it's trial by committee right now. Uh, catchers, Hernandez up to 89 right now. That's incredibly shocking. Um, so 259 average, 16 home runs, showing some pop this year. And Barry looking pretty good. I'm not sure why Valido is up. So we're going to send him back down to AAA. That doesn't make much sense to me for that. Um, Moya, he's up to 245, 14 home runs. Rowdy Telez, 312, 22 jacks. Had a great season. Again, he's 36. Uh, Miguel Sierra, 276. Not looking too bad. So Bowie actually got the call up. He's batting 250. Uh, Vladdy Jr. doing what he does, as always. Look at that. Up to 301, 17 home runs. Does he level play anywhere else? No, he doesn't. Eh? Okay. Um, so Ray is also on the DL. Torn finger ligament. Three to four weeks. That's going to hurt us a bit. Uh, Rob Ferrioli. Looking like maybe it's his time. Do we give him the shot? The guy plays everywhere. Not on the 40-man, though, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, Carlos Tavares, he's 93 now. 13 home runs, 280. Way to kill it, son. Aaron Summers, 19 home runs, 271. Torrey O'Keefe, 8 home runs, 238. Cole Terrell, 279. Like, this guy's just playing really, really good baseball. Hashimoto, do you play? No infield? Okay. 
Uh, Soto's down to an 80, 15 jacks, 260. So he has picked up his game a bit. And Treo in the minors. So we can call somebody up here. Um, I'm thinking we're probably going to have to look at somebody who's on our 40 man, obviously. And uh, Sanchez does play around. He does provide some power. So we're going to give him the call. Um, he'll provide, obviously, playing a lot of positions for us with our injuries that we have. Um, and right now, I think, you know, I might go take a look to see what potential I can upgrade. And I'll be right back. Well, guys, what can I say? We found a massive D Hill with the Dodgers. Big, big deal. So, as you can see, I'm moving on from Delman Cook. Um, I feel like our depth at uh, starting pitcher is fantastic. I'd like to call up Brian Avalos and give him a shot here. Um, he's 87, he's younger. Uh, Delvin Cook's coming up with this contract. He's going to be expensive, so I'm okay to move on from him there. Uh, Miguel Sierra, we're moving on from. I know he's been a big, big, uh, long-time guy for us here, but we're getting a massive upgrade, as you're going to see on the left side eventually. And uh, Francisco Bolito, who we acquired randomly uh, just to get some catcher depth. Apparently, they're interested. I guess he's, he's a potential, but I mean, look at the depth we had ahead of him. So I feel like this is the reason why we can make this move. Coming back to the way, yes, this piece is more so just for the contract. I'm going to be flipping him right after. But bringing in, we have Richie Saito, 26B, 82, nice big first baseman. And the star of this deal, Pablo Baladeres, 24, A potential, 91 overall. So we're going to make that flip. I think this immediately makes us better off the bat already. And uh, right now, I'm going to go to try and flip Cal Quantrill. And I'll be right back. All right, guys. So it's time to turn Cal Quantrill into something that makes sense for us. Uh, to replace that catcher that we did lose, we're going out and getting Vernon Guzman, 23B71. Looks like a big boy. Numbers looking pretty good. Good contact hitter. Not a bad fielder. Looks like he calls a pretty good game. Big guy. I'll take it. It's good depth. Uh, we're finally going to move on from Otis Gaspar. Jorge Saldana's leaving. And then Cal Contrill, we're moving on from that contract. We're essentially taking the same thing back, but just getting a catching prospect now, which I feel like really is going to make a big difference for us. And Corbin Burns, I mean, essentially, he's just a one-year deal. Um, he's going to burn off. So we'll quickly make this trade. Obviously, this has completely, completely turned the roster around a little bit here. And I think just in looking at some of the deals I was going to make, uh, this has definitely opened up a lot of can of worms here for us. So we're going to give Brian Avalos his chance. This kid is going to come up to the major leagues. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, so Burns obviously is going to go straight down to AAA. Um, he's going to be gone after this year. So nothing big coming for us um, from that deal. Um, obviously here, these guys are looking fine. Um, here's where the big situation happens. So we got Richard Moya, who we could send down. Oh, here we go. So I think this is where the big piece is here. So Ray is still injured. Yeah. So for the most part, it looks like we're going to have to kind of make a quick choice here amongst maybe sending down one of these guys now, now that Belladeras is up because this kid is just a monster. And then we got Joe Bowie here. And then Kevin Sanchez, who really hasn't played. But Sanchez does play more positions for us, which I think would definitely help out, all things considered. Uh, but actually, right now, we he doesn't even play shortstop, does he? No. So we don't actually have a second shortstop. That is a bit of a problem. So perhaps it is time for Rob Barrioli to finally get his call up. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen here, guys. So we're going to add Ferrioli. And we will send down Kevin Sanchez back down to AAA. So I'm sure he'll be fine and he'll clear. Um, and in which case, yep, boom, that puts us all good to go now for the roster. And now let's see how the boys pan out for the rest of the season here as we go into the next few months. So the organization wants to talk. I don't got time to talk. Sanchez cleared. That's perfect. We took out Tampa. We took out Detroit. Come on, we split with the Angels. We take out Baltimore. We take out Boston. We take out the Mets. Come on, take out the Yankees. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, our 40 man is a little too high right now. So let's go take a peek to see who is sitting on the 40 man who doesn't need to be there. Oh, yep, that's you. So you are going to be removed. And you're going to go through waivers. And you can go away. And out of that massive deal, we got that catcher back that we wanted. So that really worked out well for us. Uh, the Jays have too many people on their active roster. So who's back? 
um, who came back off the DL or whatever the case might be and let's figure out exactly what is going on here um, so we look okay on this side so my guess is it's likely yeah Albert Ray is back in the lineup so Treo has actually passed Juan Soto so Soto's time with us I fear is rolling down to a bad end here after some phenomenal baseball that he's played so um, we are gonna have to send somebody down and the three first basemen set up I think we got going right now is not gonna do it so Richard Moya we're gonna have to move him down to AAA he has an option so it'll work Rowdy Telez is playing too good a baseball right now for us to make those choices so let's keep simming through here the Bisons are gonna get the change so we lost the Yankee series we take out Detroit and apparently right now we're back up to 26 again so does somebody healthy again probably on the pitching side yes so De La Rosa is back Walker Sterling gonna head down to AAA now um, and if somebody takes him unfortunately that is a loss that we're gonna have to take because everybody else is playing some great baseball um, so we're gonna keep strolling on through here uh, so the Minnesota series there we go so Sterling passed uh, Buffalo yep fixed them up we lost the Minnesota series the Bisons AAA will be moving on they won their division 85 and 55 good stuff boys and the Fisher Cats, 89 and 51, also moving their way along. Looking good, guys. So we take out Texas. We take out Houston. It's time to get hot. The Fisher Cats are moving on in double A. Uh, and triple A is done. That's unfortunate. We take out Cleveland. The double A team has won their championship series. We sweep Boston. We take out Tampa. Come on. We sweep Baltimore. It's 101 wins. Can we keep going all the way through here? 103 and 59 another 100 win season here for the boys um looking fantastic so let's just see how the guys finished off this season so willie del rosa coming back he's 11 and 6 304 brian avalos 5 and 3 2.6 after coming up this kid is phenomenal and now josh ramirez ends up on the freaking dl one to two months he's going to be gone so uh, Walker Sterling has been called back up. Ozzy Perez, 14 and 5, 2.4, a great season. Marcus Miller, 1 and 1, 1.53. Castaneda, 12 and 5, 4.64. Four. So that ERA really got up there. Walker Sterling, uh, 9 and 6, 4.51. Uh, Yoshi up there, 3.48. Uh, 11 and 3, 3.18 for Ragsdale. Dwyer, 6 and 2, 3, 2, 1, had a great year. Barlow, 2 and 3, 3.59. Coley, 4.5, a little high, a little high. Um, 1.62 for Huffman and 1.69 for Ellis. So their overalls did go down. Not a big fan of it, but uh, you know maybe we'll have to work on relievers going into the next season. Uh, Gregorio Perez 5.65. I mean this guy had so much potential. I don't understand why he can't figure it out. And Lerma who got the call up, uh, 1.35 ERA. Not looking too shabby. Hernandez up to 89. So he has a 270 average, 20 home runs, which is massive. For a guy who didn't have really big hitting numbers. So great to see that growth. Uh, James Berry, five home runs, pitched in 257. Totally cool. Uh, Jensen didn't get a chance to play. And Littner also got the call up. So we may see the end of Berry next season because Jensen looks like he could be taking that spot. Uh, Richie Saito, 302 average, 27 home runs. Looking great. Uh, Moya got called back up, 22 home runs, 242. Rowdy Telez, a phenomenal season again. 32 home runs, 95 RBIs, and a 294 average. Uh, Pablo Baladares, 23 home runs, 83 RBIs, 30 stolen bases, and a 302 average. Like we are talking about a bona fide superstar. Uh, Bowie pitched in a 353 average in his time. Sanchez, 222. Uh, Vlad Jr., strong as always, 26, 101, 12, 299. The guy's a boss. Uh, Garlobo batting 412 in the minors. Good stuff, buddy. Uh, Rays up to 281, 22 stolen bases. That was fantastic. Ferrioli batted 381 in his time up. That's good to see because we're going to need somebody to take over for Ray since he is 32. So hopefully he takes him under his wing. Dave Poole is apparently now officially a top uh, top prospect in baseball. Uh, Tavares was fired, 21, 292 average. That looks good. Uh, Louis Cordero working his way up. I like to see that. Iramura as well. Uh, Aaron Summers, 30 home runs, 92 RBI, 20 stolen bases, 268 average, looking good. Cole Terrell's up to an 88. That's unbelievable in my eyes. Pitches in with 20 home runs and a 285. O'Keefe with 13 home runs and a 251. So the average a little low, but, you know, not too shabby. Uh, Hashimoto up to 82. That's good stuff, man. 
Uh, Treo obviously didn't play. 253 and 23 for Soto. I think his time with us is done. And Ashton did not play as well. So it is time, guys, to move on to the postseason. We won the division, which I'm assuming is probably by a landslide. And we will be playing the Chicago White Sox. So it's a bit of a new one. We haven't played the White Sox here before, so let's see how this one goes. We got De La Rosa against Yolito. We lost. Wow, okay. So Avalos, our rookie, against Whitley. That's a loss. Come on, guys. Pull it together here. Apparently, Marlon Dwyer is starting, and I'm not really understanding why that would ever be a thing. So let's go take a quick peek. Yeah, Dwyer, you you shouldn't shouldn't be doing this stuff. Where are all of our starters? Are we injured again? So Ramirez, I got one, two, three, four. Oh, so Sterling got sent back down. Well, you know, I think you got to call up Sterling. Oh, he's not eligible. Oh, that sucks. All right, this is going to hurt because we are sending a reliever up to start. But, I mean, Avalos went. So if I'm looking at my pitching rotation... I'm not so inclined to send up a reliever. So, you know, realistically, he is not bad, but I'd rather put Perez up there, let him take the next start, and I'm going to, you know, potentially lose and die by one of my better players. So Perez and Aguchi, that's the loss. We got destroyed that game too. So um, this was not a good finish for us right now. I'm uh, very, very surprised that the guys got swept here by the White Sox. The Royals take the Mets in the 2031 World Series. This one ended in a bit of a disappointment. I thought we had a lot of good stuff we were looking at. Um, and the boys just didn't pan out. So, I know we did definitely save it a lot of areas we have to fix. Uh, Francisco Lindor being an inductee here into the Hall of Fame. And, uh, do we have their numbers? I think these are regular season numbers, so we're not going to get to see playoffs. Let's take a quick look at those awards, as always, and see um, what everybody got. And those are gone. I passed through those. That is my apologies. Um, okay. So, here's our free agency. We got Guerrero Jr., Barry, Soto, and Burns, who obviously is a wash. We're not touching him. We're actually okay, surprisingly, for all of our coaches. So guys, this is where I leave you off with this one. Um, this obviously had a lot more potential that didn't pan out for us here. So I'm quite disappointed with the finish from the boys. But we got some good pieces in play. I'm feeling confident going into next year. I'm going to be making some moves this offseason, which you guys will have to tune into the next episode to find out what is going on behind the scenes. So thank you again for dropping by, showing that love and support. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button as hard as you possibly can if you are not subscribed to the Millennial Man Cave and turn notifications on because YouTube does not tell you when the videos are dropped. So go check that out. Um, what else can I say to you guys besides leave the fire comments, hit the like button to get things going up there, share the videos with your friends. You might know some future MMC love family that could, you could be bringing here um, and building up this amazing MMC nation, Sharma nation we got going here. Um, so go do that for us as well. We appreciate that. Um, as always, in the description below, guys, you're going to find all of our social media pages. You might have seen that our boy Andrew, our social media manager, our music creator, is taking things to the next level. He's phenomenal. We're so happy to bring apart that nice family thing we got going right now with myself, Chef Tom, Andrew, all cousins, all in this project together. As you guys know, Matza Mike, Polar Bear Steve, also cousins. Um, so, you know, having the family affair with some of our friends joining as well, guys like the Nittermeyer, um, my future family and my brother-in-law, um, you know, Matty Ice, who you guys have seen before. So, you know, it's been really fun in that sense for us to be able to bring you guys kind of a, a, a fly on the wall, if you will, to the stuff that we say and we do and part of our gaming stuff. So, um, yeah, go check out those social media pages, kind of losing the way there a little bit, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's just nice to look back and see that our family is growing with you guys joining part of it. The MMC, one big fan, man. Um, so I'm really happy. So, you know, for Andrew taking over social media, guys, make sure you go follow to appreciate the work he's putting in. You know, he's keeping the engagement with you guys. Obviously, Chef Tom and I are still checking, as I mentioned in some previous episodes. So uh, some real goodness there. Go follow Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Go do it. You'll enjoy it. Live streams back on again. A lot of Madden 19 on the go. Tons of games still to come up. Some Spider-Man as well. So I'm just saying you're going to want to be around for that business. Um, go check out our partners, Clutch Chairs and Insane Labs. Some hot promo codes there for you guys to save some money. And as always, Redbubble, official 
MMC Merchandise Store. Go check it out in the top corner. Um, great quality products, cheap prices, ships international. So no matter where you are in the world, you can get your hands on some. Grab it, guys. Sign up for the newsletter or emails they send you because you can always get 25% off on top of the good prices. So you can't go wrong. No reason not to have MMC merch. Go do it. Make your boys proud. Wear it. Rep it. You guys are part of that fam. And as I always say, take a picture and send it to Andrew because he will take care of it and show you guys some love on those social media pages And because uh, you guys deserve that. So, guys, this is where I leave you. I'm off to go do some off-season work here. And probably going to head to bed shortly after. But uh, much love to you guys. We're going to keep it traditional this time around. And you know what to do. Keep it twirling. Yeah.